gospel reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly pieces and places. As he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth, in Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This concludes our reading. Amen. <laughs> Ruth, you read that excellently. Thank you so very much. You know, I just love it when it comes, when I'm preparing for a week sermon and real life application happens as you're preparing for it. And so this week, we're starting a new series, a summit series on worship. And you know, we are used to having Lou and Alan here with the music, and Cecilia, you know, her flight was late and, and canceled, so she couldn't make it. And so, you know, every I got the message, and well, we're gonna have to call Lou, and I'm like, no, we're gonna respect Lou's time off, and we're gonna worship, and we're gonna be some, we're gonna be the acapella choir of St. Paul's United Methodist Church this week, and we've done. I'll give us a B so far. All right. All right. So let us go in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you again, Laura, as we glean upon the scriptures to learn life application. We just give you the praise, honor, and the glory. Father, I ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you as I deliver this word in which you have given. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. This week begins a summer series on worship. Who else can we look to examine worship except the man after God's own heart? The man who sometimes got it wrong but pursued God anyway. The man who grew up in the shadow of his brothers made his mark by beating a giant with a stone. Oh, we know about David because the story is one that is told throughout the Old Testament, and he is the major author of the book of Psalms. There is something dynamic about David, something compelling, and yet something disturbing about the life that he leads and the choices that he makes. You can't help to wonder why is he considered a man after God's own heart? Clearly, it wasn't because David was perfect and always did the right things, because we know he did not. 
I believe we can relate to David because he wasn't perfect, yet he is remembered and described as a man after God's own heart. As we take a dive into the summer series, there are many attributes and inclinations that might help us understand what it means to be a person after God's heart. And this series, we will consider for David, worship was life. It wasn't just something that he did. We might say it wasn't a specific time, the day or the week. Rather, worship was who he was. David lived and breathed worship. Yes, sometimes he got it wrong. Sometimes he followed impulses that led him astray. And sometimes he got confused about who was the object of his worship and got in the way of the, of the God he loved. But through it all, David lived his life as though it was an offering to God. We will look to see how David's worship, but more importantly, we will see the importance of worship and when we come together and how we can worship in our daily lives. This week as I prepared, I was torn between 2 Samuel chapter 6 and Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. 2 Samuel gives us so much to learn about worship, how and when to worship, but Ephesians gives us a reason to worship. In 2 Samuel 6, we read that David is bringing the ark of God into Jerusalem. It was important for the ark to be in Jerusalem as it represented the very presence of God. The challenge, it had been 70 years past since the ark was taken to the house of Aben Abed after it captured by the Philistines. We learn a couple of things for life application. David celebrated and worshiped after bringing the ark out of the house of Aben Abed. He worshiped, not only did he worship, but he took everyone with him to worship. But all those that were with him worshiped and celebrated along with him in his joyous occasion. Now David faced some challenges getting the ark to Jerusalem. In fact, he lost a friend. And he had to put the ark for three months in Obed-Edom's house. And once he found out that because the ark was there, that Odad Edom's house was being blessed, David was like, we're going to get it. How can I get it to me? Because that is the Lord that I serve. And so David got the ark to the city of David. And when he did, he danced. He worshiped. Because he, fought, he let everyone know he was the king but he was also going to worship the God that he served. Now, some of you might say, and matter of fact, I might say, did it take all of that? Did it take him worshiping? Did it take him dancing? Did it take him in his ephod? Did it take all of that, David, to worship God? And I tell you, it all depends on your relationship with God. I, over the 17 years that I have been overseas, I have seen everything from people sitting quietly listening to the word of God and tears coming down their face, to everyone dancing and shouting and waving their hands and stomping their feet and giving, shouting the praises to the Lord. Everyone has their individual way to worship. But when we come together, no matter if it's quietly, no matter if it's an amen quarter, no matter if it's lifting up of hands, we are giving thanks to the God that gives us breath every day, who sees us out of troubles, who gives us life. And that is what David is doing here. He is giving thanks. And because not only is he giving thanks, but everyone in the city of David can understand it and know that if their king can give thanks and worship, so can I. No matter what he faced, he still gave 
worship to God. Now, not everyone is going to be happy when you worship. Look at his wife. She was not happy, but that's another sermon for another day. And what you do is you say, thank you very much, and it did not stop him from worshiping God. And that is what I say to us, that as we live our lives and as we go through our day, let everything that we do worship God. Let us, the words that are coming out of our mouths, it starts with the thoughts in our minds. Let us worship God. Now you say, okay, minister, we know that we are to worship God. You've told us in our own relationship, you know, how to worship God. But why do we worship God? Well, then that takes us over to Ephesians chapter 2. Mm -mm. You see, I told you they were going to connect. How do they connect? Well, Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that we are blessed, we are chosen, we have been adopted, we are redeemed, we are an heir, we are loved, we have been created, and most importantly, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Well, what does that mean? How many of you have, no, let me, in the old days, and I'll say that, because I can say our old days, right? When you went to the post office, you wrote a letter, you sealed it, and what happened? You put an address on it, right? And it went to the destination that it was created to go to. Well, that is the same for us. You see, we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. And with that seal of the Holy Spirit, that tells the Lord that we are his. And no matter what comes up against us, that that seal of the Holy Spirit, that we have been purchased through the blood of Jesus Christ. So when the time comes, whether Jesus comes back himself or he calls us home, as we have the seal of the Holy Spirit, we will go to the destination that he has prepared for us. Amen. Knowing that, there should be a hallelujah. Knowing that, there should be an amen. Knowing that when I go through this week, that no matter what comes up against me, I will remember that I am blessed. I am chosen. I am adopted. I am accepted in Christ. I am redeemed. I am an heir of his inheritance. I am loved by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I was created for such a time as this and for a purpose. And I am sealed with the Holy Spirit. So as we get ready to depart this place, let the Holy Spirit, or let the Holy Spirit always seal us so that way we can dance. If that's how we worship, we can call out Jesus if that's how we worship. We can say a amen if that is how we worship. I don't know about you, but the first thing in the morning that I do, because I'm getting a little bit older, is I get up in the morning after my dogs have thumped on the bed to say it's time to get up at five, I say thank you, Lord, for another day. Because somebody didn't make it. So thank you. Then I go about my prayers and walk and everything else, but everything else, I have thanked the Lord in worship. I enjoy, I enjoy worship, whether individually or collectively, I invite you to live a life of worship with me, to come to see what the Lord is going to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.